There's two subjects I want to take a brief look at today for Elite Dangerous, Botting and the Frontier's latest financial report. Now the Botting issue is tangentially related to this week's issue report, and I'll get to that in just a moment. First over, for those of you wondering what Botting is, this is where players use automated accounts to achieve certain goals. This may appear a single account or multiple accounts, often it might be used to manipulate the background simulation or power play. As you can no doubt imagine, running a farm of automated accounts 24-7 in any game will be capable of achieving results that no player could hope to match. Botting, of course, is rife in many online games. World of Warcraft is just one example among many of an online game that has struggled with the problem of botting for its entire history. If you're wondering to what extent this affects Elite Dangerous, well, a player group known as the Alliance Office of Statistics undertook a study of this back in 2018 and wrote an extensive report on their findings. You can find this report linked in the video description. So this report made it extremely clear that botting was, at the time, a very big problem. So if you, as a player, were enjoying playing the background simulation, then this becomes almost impossible when you are playing against automated accounts. It causes huge, huge problems. And to this day, it still appears to remain a problem, although the extent of that problem is relatively unknown. However, if you want anecdotal evidence, then you need only browse the official forums or the comments section of YouTube videos. So, how is this relevant to this week's issue report? Well, the issue report is made up of the top 20 community voted problems. Each of these subjects is taken from Elite's issue tracker. Interestingly, at number 6 on the issues tracker is botting. Frontier have chosen to exclude this issue from their issues report. Quite naturally, some players have questioned why this item is missing, so Frontier have explained why that is the case. Here is what they had to say. In this case, the issue of automated accounts, we'll call it botting from here on, is one we're fully aware of, but is handled differently than standard issues like graphical bugs. Bot detection and account moderation is an ongoing effort, and while we know botting is a problem, it has not been processed on the issue tracker the same way as a typical issue would be. Botting cannot be reproduced and confirmed internally like a typical bug, and therefore has not entered the acknowledged state. For our top 20 issues report, we gathered the issue list from those marked as acknowledged which is why it did not appear. Now, personally, I feel this is an absolutely reasonable explanation. Obviously, if it's not acknowledged, then it perhaps shouldn't be on the issues report. There's also another element here, which is Frontier not being willing to discuss how and why certain botting takes place. And this really is a similar policy to any security hacking or scamming uh, policy from any number of companies. As an analogy, it's unlikely that a security firm would disclose the specifics of how some, uh, someone broke the security measures of their system. So, yes, this makes sense. What doesn't make sense, however, is why Frontier have traditionally been reluctant to discuss bannings. Returning to the World of Warcraft example, Blizzard regularly will announce how many accounts they banned for cheating or botting. Many other games do the same as well. I have to wonder why Frontier appear to be unwilling to do the same. It would certainly give the community some confidence that the issue is, is being taken seriously. So do let me know your thoughts and feelings on this subject in the comments section below. Do you feel the number of banned accounts should be disclosed? Do you even feel that botting is much of an issue? Or is it perhaps a subject that gets blown out of all proportion? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Moving on to the second subject for this video then, Frontier's annual financials have been posted. These reports are a legal obligation for publicly traded companies within the UK, with Frontier having to disclose certain details about their business and their financial position. Keep in mind that this report is not aimed at the gaming community. This is firmly a business obligation and as such might not contain certain gaming specific details we might otherwise like to see. So what stands out in this particular report? Well, there's some details about Odyssey, but they are very, very limited. Regarding the launch of Odyssey, Frontier have this to say. Completing this large and complex expansion without the benefits of face-to-face -face collaboration was challenging. And despite a successful alpha period, unfortunately the launch was hindered by connectivity issues, and this turned the positive reception of the alpha to one of negativity. 
Despite its initial challenges, hundreds of thousands of players are enjoying their experience. I am delighted with the underlying achievement by our team and remain confident that more and more players will upgrade to Odyssey over time as we continue to refine the experience. So there's a lot to pick apart in that paragraph, but I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Firstly, based purely off forum posts, YouTube comments, Reddit posts and other social comments, I don't think that the Odyssey Alpha was particularly positive. Definitely a mixed bag there, at least as far as I could see and in my opinion. Secondly, was it really connectivity issues that caused Odyssey's launch to receive negativity? I think we all know the answer to that one. But there's little point dwelling too much on this. This is clearly the position that Frontier want to present to the business world, and personally, I believe that speaks volumes about their take on things. Now, within the report, Frontier have avoided disclosing sales numbers for Odyssey. Meanwhile, Frontier's brokers have also released a report on the company. Keep in mind that the information in this report, uh, from Liberum, is uh, written for investors and so generally is designed to look positive. In this financial year then, Frontier's revenue has grown by 19%, with the total revenue generated being 90.7 million, compared to 76.1 million in the previous year. There's a small section on Odyssey and consoles. The news here is slim at best. The report reiterates that Frontier are focusing on the PC version of Odyssey. There's still no release information on when Odyssey will come to consoles. This obviously is going to be a major source of frustration to console players, and I can completely relate to that. Interestingly, the report points out that the PC has around two-thirds of the total Elite Dangerous player base. In terms of revenue, the report forecasts that Elite Dangerous was expected to generate 15 million in the financial year 2022, which is 10 million pounds downgrade from the 25 million previously forecast. This forecast downgrade appears to be due to the problems with Odyssey, as well as the lack of information on the console release. So there we have it. I was kind of expecting to, I'm hoping to see a bit more information on the specifics of Odyssey in this particular report, but it seems Frontier don't want to go into too much detail there. Again, on this subject, do let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.